Hello and welcome to the LRG vlog. I am LRG's Executive Director of Policy and Governance and I'm joined this week by our Bulletin Editor, Dennis. Hello, Dennis. Hi, Helen. So the general election is over. As if you didn't know, we have, as predicted by all the polls, a new Labour government, the first in 14 years, actually. And let's not underplay the significance of this because Back in 2019, Labour did indeed suffer a crippling defeat, and as well as losing 59 seats, which was the second highest loss by any opposition for a century, the party shed votes in nearly every part of the country, with the most significant swings being in the north northeast of England, the West Midlands, Yorkshire and Humberside, um, and the East Midlands, in fact. And in England, the southeast was the only place they didn't drop seats, as I understand it. So Labour's won the election with a 291 seat majority. The last time they managed a three figure majority was 23 years ago, uh, back in 2001 with Tony Blair. The last time the Conservatives did that was during the Thatcher and then uh, Major took over win in 87. And they only just did it. They did it with 102. And even when Margaret Thatcher won in 1980, Three, it was with a majority of 144. So if you want to equal or exceed the sheer magnitude of Labour's majority in this election, you literally have to go back to the wartime coalition in 1935 under Winston Churchill. So it is pretty significant. Turnout, however, was at its lowest since 2001 and only marginally better than the lowest ever recorded back in 1918. And you can examine a number of other statistics, of course, and in consequence, there's often a lot of talk by those parties who would benefit in relation to uh, proportional representation rather than our first part of the post system. But that's that's not for today, Dennis. The election's been described, as we know, by commentators as a landmark election and an election for change. But what precisely will that change look like? As we all know, manifestos are not binding, but if they stick to it, Dennis, what can we expect Labour to do? Well, of course, Helen, that is the central question of uh, today's vlog. But can I just make a few observations before we get into that? Because oh. uh, I did stay up, actually, for most of the election night. And as in previous years, I noticed some some things that resonate with the past. I don't know whether you've noticed that a number of North East returning officers are involved in this race to be the first to declare uh, and I'm curious, you know, why the, why they why they why they do this. And I also noticed that the first five declarations were all northeast constituencies. What do you think of that? Now I'm sitting in the northeast of England and uh, quite proud of that in a way. But I wonder what it's all about. And perhaps we should get some of those uh, returning officers to some of our courses and explore what it is that they do. And again, an unusual thing. Uh, um, Sunderland were the first to declare the result on the night. Again, they've done this before. Some interesting points, but back to the business. You're quite right, Helen. The electorate clearly have voted for change. This is the most significant uh, election for many years in that respect. It, and it looks as though it's giving rise to a new approach to government from the speeches that we've seen in recent days. But you're right. The central question is, what does this mean for local government, for our sector and for our members? Now, you'll remember that I published in Bulletin 23 all the manifesto commitments from the major parties. And the time is now right, isn't it, for us to look at what Labour promised, what they would do once they were in government. Now, there's so much to cover in this area that I thought it would be an idea to cover three local government policy areas that they've raised, as these are most likely to be of interest uh, to our broad membership. And so the three I've selected uh, are devolution, democracy, housing and planning, all of which have been as the subject of speeches in the last few days, incidentally. How about that as a start off? I think that sounds pretty great. Let's uh, let's look at devolution, Dennis. Right. Well, as I say, there have been speeches today and yesterday about this, and Keir Starmer has got straight into having meetings with Metro mayors and the leaders of the nations of the UK. Um, and Labour have said in their manifesto that they will transfer power out of Westminster and into the communities with landmark devolution legislation to take, to take back control. Angela Rain has said today, no gimmicks, levelling up is coming out of the title of the ministry. It is now going back to the name Ministry of Housing, Local Government and Communities. So clearly there's an emphasis and a focus there uh, by the leadership of the Labour Party on particular things that are important to them. 
And they have said in their manifesto that in England, Labour will deepen devolution settlements for existing combined authorities, and they will widen devolution to more areas, and they intend to encourage local authorities to come together and take on new powers uh, as well. And Labour also say that at the centre of their approach is a new statutory requirement that they'll bring in, and this is a statutory requirement for local growth plans that will mm. cover towns and cities across the country. And they've also said that they will review the governance arrangements for combined authorities to unblock decision making as they describe it. Yeah, well, it's interesting too, Dennis, that Labour say they will provide greater flexibility with integrated, I can never say that word, integrated settlements for mayoral combined authorities that can show mm. exemplary management of public money. It sounds, sounds great terminology, um, the way that's been written. But on the controversial issue of housing and planning, they, uh, they say they will seek to consolidate powers to allow for improved decision making, how that's going to look. You know, you'll recall that Conservatives tried to do quite a lot with planning and um, it was problematic for them. But they've said that they will also renew opportunities for the Prime Minister and heads of devolved government to collaborate with each other. Mm. Uh, that was recommended in the report to the Commission on the UK's future. Um, mm -hmm. And they'll also establish a new Council of the Nations and Regions. So... Just to mention here, if anyone missed the last edition of the vlog, this covers uh, micro devolution. It's a fascinating concept, mm. uh, basically for strengthening local communities in regards to service provision. So do listen to that, because I think we're going to hear a lot more about micro devolution. Turning to democracy now, Dennis, Labour have made a clear commitment to encourage greater participation in democracy and have said that they will improve voter registration and lessen the inconsistencies in, in uh, voter ID rules that mm. prevent legitimate voters from voting, they say. Um, and they've also said that they're going to increase engagement um, amongst young people by giving 16 and 17 year olds the right to vote in, in all elections. And they made reference in their manifesto that they will protect democracy by strengthening the rules around donations by political parties. But uh, what else, Dennis? Well, uh, I was just going to go on to housing and planning there. But can I just mention on something you've just mentioned there, this uh, question of looking at the voter ID rules. An article has appeared in the local, uh, sorry, in the national press, uh, either today or yesterday, saying that over 400,000 people may have been disenfranchised by the existing voter ID rules, which you know have been criticised since their introduction uh, before the last local election. So it's interesting that that is going to be a, a, a hot topic for the government to, to address. And clearly there are some issues there. Yeah. But yes, turning now to housing and uh, planning, there's a lot in the manifesto on this, and a number of issues. So I'll try and keep to the, to the main points. Labour have said that they will immediately update the national policy planning framework to undo what they describe as the damaging conservative changes, including restoring mandatory housing targets. Well, as you know, Rachel Reeves has already yes. announced this and the consultation on the national policy pl uh, plan planning framework has already begun. So the, within the first 72 hours of government, these things are already uh, in place. They've also said that they will take tough action to ensure that planning authorities have up to date local plans and reform and strengthen the presumption in favour of sustainable development. And they also say that they will support local authorities by funding additional planning officers through increasing the rate of the stamp duty surcharge paid by non-UK residents. Further, Labour have also said that they're determined to ensure that local communities continue to shape house building in their area. But where necessary, and this is where Labour say they'll take a strong line, Labour will not be afraid to make the full use of intervention powers to build housing and houses where they are needed. Mm. <clears throat> I noticed, Dennis, that Labour have some controversial plans, uh, well, amongst commentators about Greenbelt redevelopment. Mm. Um, they've said that they'll, they're, they're going to take a brownfield first approach, prioritising development of previously used land where possible and fast tracking. Uh, approval of urban brownfield sites, but they are empathet empathetic that brownfield development alone will not be enough to meet housing needs. Now, I know they said this a lot in recent months in the media, and they say further that Labour will take a more strategic approach in relation to green belt land designation and will release land to build more homes 
in the right places, they say. Um, at the heart of the matter, Labour says that the release of lower quality grey belt land will be prioritised and they will introduce what they call golden rules to ensure mm. development benefits both communities and nature. Quite what that will look at, whether there'll be any revisitation of biodiversity, net gain um, and other kind of habitat protections. It is in their manifest, there's quite a lot about protection of habitat in their manifesto, actually, mm. I noticed. Yes, and all of these aspects are interesting and, 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 and will be well supported. Labour have said that they want to work in partnership with local leaders in communities. And again, we've seen the start of that with the uh, Prime Minister having the series of meetings that have already taken place. Another interesting feature, a Labour government will build a new generation of new towns. Many of those in the North East, I'm familiar with them myself, from my own experience. These will be based around the original legacy for new towns, which was set out by the 1945 Labour government. And they also said that they will require all combined and mayoral authorities to strategically plan for housing growth in their uh, in their areas. And combined authorities will be given new powers, they say, and new freedoms and flexibilities to be to make better use of grant funding. Mm. Well, I, I see as well that there are plans to reform compulsory purchase compensation rules yeah. to to well with the object, I think, to improve land assembly. Mm -hmm. and speed up site delivery, particularly for housing and infrastructure projects. The Labour say that their biggest challenge will be to increase the amount of social and affordable housing. And mm -hmm. and, it, and if listeners uh, pay attention to the podcast today, I, I, I talk mm -hmm. about homelessness statistics. Um, so affordable housing to be built, and they say they will strengthen planning obligations to ensure new developments provide more uh, about uh, for affordable homes and um, together this they say will will build new so social rented homes and better protect existing housing stock. but we we know there's a fundamental crisis so uh finally on housing i think the new the new labor government have said that they they will legislate to overhaul regulation of the private rented sector so we, we know that's no no fault evictions were, were looked at previously yeah didn't get over the line so it'll be interesting no. to see how quickly they move and if they do do that massive issue it needs to be addressed we all know it needs to be addressed as well and you know there's obviously so much we could have discussed yeah. today isn't there we, we, there's adult so adult and social care issues all aspects of labor's health plans for example climate change and the environment not to mention workforce protections and so forth but we will pick up on those won't we over the coming weeks and months in, as proposals come forward. But I hope that today's uh, refresh of the manifesto proposals from Labour will give uh, members a, a, a good insight into what is likely to happen on those major policy areas that I described earlier. I hope members will find that interesting. I'm sure they will, Dennis. And actually, you're right to pick up on the work, workforce changes because actually there's a lot in their manifesto about, about that. Um, so we will keep an eye and see what happens as matters mm. are announced like you said they're moving very quickly but they obviously have their own list of priorities that they want to, mm. to run through so on that note you can get coverage of many more items from the bulletin by listening to the grapevine podcast so it's goodbye from me and from me too bye now